foreign against opinions, whether we should need a legislation or we don't need a legislation. But in fact, if you go back and see the experience of other countries all over the world, in fact, way back in 1850s, uh, some European countries attempted to uh, have legislation in their own uh, uh, format. And uh, even uh, the, some of the states of uh, America, they do have the legislation. But in, in each state has its own uh, way of dealing things. Similarly, in, the, uh, in our country also, few states have legislation. And uh, in the state of Karnataka, uh, bringing out legislation is a big issue. Way back in 70s, early 70s, uh, the Department of Mines in Georgia, in fact, uh, thought of uh, uh, bringing a legislation and proposed it to the state of Karnataka, but the government did not agree because at that point of time, the utilization was uh, uh, utilization of groundwater was only about uh, 25 to 30 percent, and the thrust was on uh, development. We have to make use of the and like, whatever the available resources are there for the production and also for the utilization of the people for uh, drinking water or irrigation. And then in the 80s, the department made a study of the groundwater utilization status in the districts of Bangalore, Tumpur and uh, Kola and made a presentation to the uh, none other than uh, the Chief Secretary of Government of Karnataka and uh, brought out the problems uh, related to over exploitation. But unfortunately at the end of the presentation, the Chief Secretary observed that the objective of the state is to utilize the last drop of water and we are right now not interested in bringing out any legislation. And slowly things have changed and even the Ministry of uh, Water Resources, Government of India has started circulating the draft legislation. Uh, based on one such uh, legislation draft, uh, the state of uh, uh, Karnataka has brought out uh, uh, legislation few months back. It's uh, only a few months back. In the last uh, uh, session, this bill has been passed. And uh, I would like to briefly present uh, what are the contents of that uh, bill in this presentation. Before moving on to the, uh, the legislation, I would like to draw your attention to the observations made by uh, one of the uh, high courts uh, in our country, uh, specifically the uh, High Court of uh, uh, Kerala has observed that groundwater is a national wealth and it belongs to the entire society. It is a nectar sustaining life on earth. Without water, the earth would be a desert. Our legal system includes the public trust doctrine as part of its jurisprudence. The state is the trustee of all national resources which are by nature meant for public use and employment. Public at large is the beneficiary of the sea, shore, running waters, air, forest, ecologically fragile lands. The state as trustee is under a legal duty to protect the natural resources. The resources for public use cannot be converted into private ownership. Today, because of the scarcity of water, what is happening? Uh, the supply of drinking water has become a big trade. Uh, government is unable to regulate it. And uh, you have heard uh, uh, the earlier presentation that where, what is the quality of water being supplied through tankers. Next slide, please. So the, the gist of the whole uh, the Karnataka Groundwater Regulation and Control of Development and Management Act 2011 is establishment of a groundwater authority and identify and notify over exploited areas, regulate sinking of new wells, bore wells in the notified areas. Uh, this, uh, this is the sum of the whole, uh, uh, sums of the whole legislation, what it has. Next slide. Now, what is that groundwater authority and who constitute this groundwater authority? Uh, because the groundwater is a subject under the minor irrigation uh, department at the government level, the secretary to government minor irrigation department would be the chairman of the committee and 
because the groundwater is dealt by the Department of Mines and Geology at the field level. It is the Director of Mines and Geology will be the Member Secretary and all other departments uh, which are the stakeholders which uh, they are directly or indirectly involved with this uh, uh, water, uh, groundwater are the members of this committee. In addition to that, uh, there, are, there is a representation from the farming community also. There is a provision to nominate four representatives from the farming community and in addition to that, two experts in the field of groundwater will also be nominated by the government as members to this committee. Next. And again, these are the members, we have read all these uh, names of the members, they are the, uh, the different organization heads uh, in the state. Next slide. And what does the, uh, this authority does? Uh, the authority at least uh, once in three months they should meet and deliberate on the status of uh, groundwater availability and utilization and decide on the areas which they need to notify. And uh, uh, they have to recommend it to the state, uh, state government uh, for notifying those areas. In the absence of the, there is a president, in the absence of the president, one member can act as a president and deliberate on it. And all matters to be decided on majority votes. Uh, the major uh, members should agree on the proposal of the deliberations. And then quorum for a meeting shall be. Uh, seven members, at least seven members should be present in a meeting because you know in the government, though there are several members, many members will not attend the meeting because of their other engagements or even if they come or even if they, uh, they represent, uh, some junior fellow will be representing. So maybe because of that they have said that at least uh, seven people should be there and it should be seriously deliberated and then only recommendation should be sent to the state government. Next slide please. The powers of the authority, uh, the, the identify over exploited areas and recommend to the government to notify. Uh, first they should uh, take on the information available with them and decide on the areas which have been uh, over exploited and uh, suggest to the government to notify such areas and government may notify such areas prohibiting uh, uh, people from uh, drilling new wells or uh, bore wells. Then notification shall be published in the Gazette and at least one daily regional language newspaper having wide circulation. This is a must it should be because people should know the areas which have been notified. And then if groundwater status has improved in a given area because of various interventions, then the committee should recommend for to the government for denotifying such areas. And then also maintain and upkeep the database on groundwater related information. This is a bigger uh, issue because the whole decision depends on the groundwater database. As on today we have database with uh, several departments. Every stakeholder is, uh, is having his own database and integrating that and bringing it to one platform and uh, out of it uh, drawing meaningful con conclusions and is very important. I think that is what they are trying to attempt it here. Next slide please. Then in the notified areas, if anybody wants to drink, uh, drill any new well, they need to apply to the agency, the groundwater authority and take a permit. Uh, otherwise they are prohibited from drilling any new well. Uh, then without the permission of the authority, no new well bore well shall be drilled. Authority shall decide on the grant or refusal of the grant after giving opportunity to the applicant. So any application made to the uh, authority, uh, the authority will call the applicant and hear on his uh, request and then only they decide on it. And application shall be disposed of within 60 days. Because this is also a thing which is very much required because otherwise any application uh, it remains unattended if there is no time frame in the government system. Next slide, please. Uh, then another important thing is registration of existing users in the notified areas because this will add on to the database. Because right now we don't have the uh, correct information on the, uh, the uh, users, existing users. Every existing groundwater user 
in the notified area shall submit an application for registration uh, within uh, 20, 120 days from the date of declaration as notified area. And uh, what is that application should contain? The application will have the description of the groundwater source, type of well, its location, where it is, and uh, what is the type of lifting device which they are using it, the quantity of groundwater withdrawal and hours of operation per day, uh, total period of use in a year, and uh, purpose for which groundwater is being extracted. Then if water, if for what, for drinking purpose, approximate population to be served. All this information has to be given along with the, in the application. Next please. Then in case of irrigation, location, extent of area irrigated and types of crops because that decides the quantity of water being replaced. And in case of state and central government agencies, local authorities or community, uh, run water supply schemes, quantity extracted, what is the total quantity which they are trying to extract and supply it to uh, the, the population and uh, how many points of extraction are there, all this information should be provided in the application. Then in addition to this, there is one more uh, uh, regulation that drilling agencies, now there are uh, innumerable number of drilling agencies and all of them need to get them registered within six months uh, uh, with the authority. Otherwise, they are not supposed to take up any drilling activity and uh, in case if they violate, uh, there are penal clauses and uh, the equipment uh, can be seized and also the bore which they have drilled can be closed by the authority. Next slide, please. Uh, powers of the authority, there are certain powers delegated to the authority to act on it. Uh, to enter any premises and take, uh, take up survey, to collect samples of soils, groundwater or other thing, to examine records and documents and to ask any questions, to serve notice or to arrange to serve notice, to install groundwater measuring meters if they want to decide on the quantum of water being extracted, to cover cost, if, if they incur any cost for installing such equipment, they can recover the cost from the groundwater users, to seize any equipment machinery used in illegal drilling, modify the conditions of the permit. Once the permit is uh, uh, given, it is not uh, uh, the true for all the period. In case of uh, change of situation, uh, they can always modify the conditions of the permit. And also they have the power to cancellation of the permit or certificate of, of uh, registration issued to the drilling agencies. Next slide, please. And in case, uh, if uh, the groundwater user is not uh, uh, giving the information, then uh, he will not be eligible for any financial assistance and uh, there is a power for the authority to disconnect the power supply to the users. Then a, per a, a person who does not possess a permit in notified area shall not be eligible to get any subsidy, grant or loan. And another provision is that the KPTC law, the power uh, providing agency can disconnect the power provided to him and uh, the user, uh, the groundwater user shall not be eligible for any subsidies, incentives from government in, in case if it is a farmer uh, unless he adopts uh, a sprinkler or drip irrigation system such as suggested by the authority. Next slide please. Then for violations because uh, uh, we are uh, uh, the, the penal clauses are essential because we know that uh, though the legislations are there in place, uh, uh, there are people who are always uh, trying to deviate from it. There are penal clauses provided for that. Uh, a violation of any rule or conditions of the permit is liable for punishment with a fine of maximum 10,000 rupees or one year imprisonment or both. And uh, continued contravention and the continued violation will attract uh, uh, 100 rupees per day uh, penal uh, penalty and no court uh, inferior to that of a metropolitan magistrate or a judicial magistrate of the first class uh, shall try any offence and uh, the decision of the authority is not the final. There is an appeal also provided and uh, any, uh, any person, user agency, if he is aggrieved on the decision of the a groundwater authority can appeal on the orders of the authority within 60 days from the uh, uh, passing of such orders. Next slide, please. 
another important thing is the bill also provides for encouraging rainwater harvesting uh, because we all know that uh, how much uh, it uh, supports uh, the entire uh, system and it is a must and in fact uh, they have suggested uh, to take up the steps to promote uh, awareness and training on rainwater harvesting through government agencies because government agencies is not only it is not sufficient it is through NGOs, educational institutions, industries and individuals. All concerned, all uh, the stakeholders uh, should be involved in creating awareness. Uh, this is uh, another important thing which has been included in the legislation. Next slide please. Then passing the bill is over but I feel a lot of problems. Uh, because as we know, already in our country, the Central Groundwater Board is having uh, the Groundwater Authority and uh, even in our state, the Central Groundwater Board has uh, declared certain districts uh, as especially Bangalore, Polar and all these things as uh, uh, the notified areas but unfortunately nothing is happening. So the biggest problem is uh, how we are going to enforce it. That is what I feel because we have passed the legislation and uh, rules are being framed, but how are we going to take it forward? Is it possible from the department, the government agencies to take it forward? I don't think it is possible because uh, we have innumerable number of uh, the legislation in the uh, country and uh, still the large number of violations. So we are known for violating the uh, law passed by us. So uh, what I foresee is difficulty in enforcing uh, whatever the bill which has been passed by the state. And another important uh, thing what I foresee is discrimination against new users. Because if anybody wants to start anything, because we know we are, all of us we have small holdings, somebody is already having a well. If I want to have something because my financial position has improved, if I want to have it either for uh, drinking or irrigation, I will be discriminated. I may not get a permit for uh, uh, using in an over exploited area. So these are some of the problems uh, which I feel in implementing uh, the, uh, the past uh, bill in the state. And what is that we need to do is my massive awareness program because there are multiple stakeholders. Everybody should be responsible for uh, taking this forward. The massive awareness program is a must. Otherwise, this is going to be the whatever the legislation passed is going to be a thorough failure. Then, community management of resources than controls by the state. Because some of the psychological setup is we are averse to, we are against the, the legislation passed. Uh, we always try to uh, disobey or go out of the system. So therefore I feel instead of the state controlling the whole resources, it is the community which should control the resources. Because they are the stakeholders, they are the users. And once the community is involved in regulating it, I feel that it can be implemented in a better way than state regulating the whole thing. Then political consensus on management strategy. This is one of the biggest problems because uh, we wanted to have legislation because there was no political will. Uh, and I am sorry to say that the bill which has been passed recently a few months back has not been debated by the politicians for a few minutes in the uh, floor of the house and it has been passed. That only shows how much we are really concerned. So that political consensus of the bill should be there. Then adequate technical inputs and appropriate incentives. Incentives is a must. Uh, uh, Mr. Mohan was referring that incentives is a because when we first uh, uh, pro proposed legislation, at least for the Bangalore city, we were telling that once uh, if somebody adopts the rooftop rainwater harvesting, there should be a at least uh, instead of collecting uh, 12 months uh, the, the tax, maybe some rebate in the tax. Similarly, in the municipal areas also. We wanted to have that. All those provisions were earlier included. Uh, maybe to the, because I don't know, the, 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 it is the state is the better uh, judge and they have deleted all those provisions. But
but still I feel it is uh, through incentives uh, we can take, uh, take these things forward. And in addition to that, adequate technical database is very, much, uh, very, very, very essential. Otherwise, our, we are drawing uh, decisions, are taking decisions, are drawing conclusions on some manipulated data or data which is not reliable, which is not representing a particular uh, given area. And then, uh, the last bit, uh, prevent crisis instead of trying to tackle it after it occurs. But unfortunately, already it has occurred and now we are trying to tackle it. So, with this, uh, I, I, would, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you.